Today, we'll be talking about bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Have you ever seen signs like these near lakes or rivers? These signs tell people not to eat the fish they catch in these streams. These signs can be found in the U.S. and all over the world at lakes, ponds, or rivers. Why do you think there are signs warning people not to consume fish in certain bodies of water? Pause the video and take a few minutes to talk to classmates about possible reasons for fishing restrictions. Although fishing restrictions can be in place for population control, they can also be imposed to prevent people from getting sick from consuming contaminated fish. Today, we'll introduce the concepts of bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Think about the following situation. Shirley's family just bought a new house in the country. She's been fishing in the creek that's on their property and her family has been eating a lot of the fish that she's been catching. Now it's six months later and some of her family members are really ill. Their symptoms include sudden bone fractures, bloody diarrhea, and nervous disorders. Find out what exactly is in the fish that they've been eating. Use this table to figure out what is in the fish. Remember the symptoms, they're listed. The fish Shirley has been catching are contaminated with aluminum, cadmium, and mercury. Notice that it isn't just one contaminant. There could be several contaminants in one food source, causing several different health issues. First, some vocabulary. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, bioaccumulation is a process by which chemicals are taken up by an organism either directly from exposure to a contaminated medium or by consumption of food containing the chemical. Some organisms have mechanisms to get rid of contaminants in their system, but bioaccumulation occurs when contaminant uptake exceeds contaminant removal. Biomagnification is the process whereby the tissue concentrations of a contaminant increase as it passes up the food chain through two or more trophic levels. If you think about it, biomagnification occurs because an organism that has bioaccumulated a contaminant gets eaten by a predator and the contamination of the prey is passed to the predator. We have definitions for bioaccumulation and biomagnification. But can you explain the difference between the two concepts? Pause the video and take a few minutes to discuss this. This animation represents bioaccumulation. The orange color represents the percentage of contaminant in a fish, such as mercury or PCBs. Bioaccumulation occurs as organisms consume a contaminated food source or absorb the contaminant. But the key concept to all of this is it occurs over time. Generally, an organism only gains a little bit of contamination in each time it is exposed to a source. But multiple exposure events, such as these fish eating contaminated zooplankton, can add up and accum accumulate in the fish over time. Remember, bioaccumulation occurs over time in an organism but biomagnification explains how contaminants move in a food web. These red arrows represent a predator-prey interaction or when a higher trophic level organism eats a lower trophic level organism. A crayfish can eat an insect with minimal contamination, but it will probably have to eat several insects to survive, which leads to a higher contaminant concentration. This same event occurs along each level of the food web with each level receiving a higher contamination con concentration than the last. 
Biomagnification isn't just a concept. It's a phenomenon researchers have observed across the globe. Plant plankton, or phytoplankton, have a small amount of mercury, but animal plankton, or zooplankton, have to eat several phytoplankton to survive, which increases the level of contamination. This pattern repeats at every level of the food web until tuna have the highest level of contamination when compared to other organisms in the food web. It's important to remember that biomagnification isn't just a problem for the environment. We eat tuna, so we're gaining an even higher level of contamination if we eat tuna often. This is why there are fishing restrictions and warnings in place to prevent us from bioaccumulating too much contaminants that could make us sick.